Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. We finally got our Raspberry Pi computer. So today we're going to show you how to make a Raspberry Media Center. Welcome to Know How, the show where we show you how to do stuff. I as Zachtar, Leo Laporte, and uh, we've been waiting for uh, uh, quite a while to do something with this little thing. This is, what is a Raspberry Pi? This Raspberry Pi is, a, this is a full-on computer with a 700 megahertz processor. That's the size of a thin cigarette pack. It's not very big. It's absolutely tiny. It doesn't come with a case. It doesn't come with a power supply powered with USB. This, I believe, is the Model B because it has two USB ports. There's an HDMI port on this. There's dual analog, there's uh, audio here and video out, and Ethernet, That's all on this amazing. tiny, tiny, low power device. No hard drive on board. You got to bring your own SD card. 35 bucks. $35. <laughs> Actually, the real challenge was to get one. I think they're now pretty much ramped up so you can get them, and they have a variety of different flavors of Raspberry Pi and more coming all the time. It, what is the minimum that we can use to get? A media center on. Does I would it think the, I would think the Model B is probably the best way okay. to go, not the Model A, uh, when it comes to that, because this has Ethernet, and I don't think the A does. You want the networking, obviously. For me, I'm a big fan of networking. not Wi-Fi though. You need you need hardwired Ethernet. Right, but you can probably hook it up via USB. But we asked the audience first, what did you guys want to do with a Raspberry Pi? If we finally got one, what would we do? So Brian, can you call up what happened? I asked this question on Twitter. I asked you guys, what would you do if you answered with the hashtag? Uh, TwitKH, we might show your answer on the air. Can we run these answers? Let's see. The first answer was... It's a it's a kit computer, so you really... It doesn't do anything by itself, although it does have an operating system. So this guy wants to build media out media center. centers yep. for all his systems. Yeah. Next. Build that a system he could use while traveling. That too. was James's yeah, idea. Because it's so small. Mike's idea was he media wants to make... Media center. XBMC. Next person. Somebody in our chat room said one of the things he liked about a media server so, liked about this is it doesn't use as much power as a big computer media server. About 80% of the people who sent us answers said media they server. want a media centers, media centers, and media centers. XBMC. Now, is there an XBMC? First of all, what operating system is a Raspberry Pi using? Is well, it a it's Linux? Got, it's got, you can run Linux on it. When you get it, you got nothing. Nothing. Right? So you can put on Raspberry. There's, there's all it's kinds its of own things. version of Linux for uh, the Raspberry right. Pi. And how about media center? Is there an XBMC for a Raspberry Pi? Thankfully, there is. There is? A special RASP BMC that just came out as 1.0 just like yesterday. Wow. So it's been out as in alphas. That's what I've been testing for the past couple of days. So we're going to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi media center using RASP BMC, which now, is a really it, tiny version of XBMC. We've already done a know-how on using Plex. I presume Plex is not available. Uh, you know, I didn't check Pi. if Plex was available. They're both based on the same thing. XBMC is the core of Plex, Boxy, and right. a lot of other things out there. So even if it's not, maybe someday soon it will be. It's a possibility yeah. right now. So the first thing you got to do is... This is so cool. I've wanted to see one of these for a while. We've got this tiny computer. So if we go to my computer, we will show you what you... All you got to do is go grab yourself a, a GUI installer. Now, you can do this command line if you want to. I found one for Mac from uh, X... It was from XBMC Hub. This is XPI installer, or XPI installer, excuse me. And what it does is immediately will find my SD card. You have to have an SD card about, now, let's say, about 8 gigabytes or is larger. Your SD card, currently it's not mounted in the computer, it's, or is it? It's it mounted, is. It's mounted in the computer. As so untitled. it sees an external volume SD card. Right. And it's going to install an operating system and the basic software onto that? Pretty much everything you need to start. Well, there's going to be a lot more installation process once you hook it into the Raspberry Pi. Okay. But it's going to give you everything you need to start. So we just download that location. It's going to format and just pretty much, you won't be able to use this card for anything else. So whatever you have on this, make sure that you back it up, put it somewhere safe. But the stuff on this card is going to be your OS. So we're going to download our location. We're going to pick an alpha mirror. We're going to install RASP BMC. Now, here's the warning saying it's going to be formatted. Any data on it, it's going to be lost. So again, be aware of that. You hit yes, and you install everything to this SD card. Now, if you get the Windows installer, which is made by the official RASP BMC, you'll get the latest version. Uh, this one for Mac is actually a little bit behind. It's on the alpha version. But you, there are instructions that we'll have 
on how to get the latest version right away. There is, by the way, Raspberry Pi Plex as well. Oh, there is. That's yeah. great. I guess it's only a matter of time. Once you have an a a XBMC, y'all adding Plex is just a little. Uh, the, the, the XBMC project's been going on for a very long time. Right. It was one of the first things that I saw. Right. The Plex one doesn't surprise me that it exists. That's yeah. also a very good cool. opportunity. So once you install this stuff to your card, I actually did this before while I was sick last week in case I could come in. So this is how it actually looks. When you start, when you hook this up to your television, this is pretty much what goes on. You'll see a bunch of installers. I've shortened the sequence a bit. This takes about 25 minutes. And actually, this is all the kind of weird stuff you'll see. Text, blue screen, it looks like old DOS. So, so just for me to understand more clearly, you've got now the SD card plugged into the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi composite out is going into a television set. You'd have to have a TV set that supported analog out. Well, I was or using you can H use HDMI. You can use HDMI. You can use the HDMI out. So, so HDMI out or uh, composite out. That's, That's what great. I was using because right. I, I wanted to get uh, 720p out of this. It can do up to 1080p. Uh, most people, some people recommend stepping it down just so it doesn't choke because it's a tiny, tiny machine. Right. So this is what you see when you're doing this. It says download a new XBMC It's build. kind of amazing if it could do 1080, to be it honest takes, with you. <laughs> like I said, it takes about 20 minutes, so it actually tells you in the installer when it's on that big blue screen, it says, hey, you might want to get a cup of coffee right. when you're doing this. Now, you can use any SD card, but the faster the card, the faster your system because it is your hard drive. A uh, number of people in the chat room are suggesting class 10. That's the fastest. Uh, SD cards uh, for the best uh, install experience and I guess for running it as well. Yeah, so what we've done on our uh, Raspberry Pi right here, we've got our uh, SD card right into the, yeah. in the slot there. It's so all exposed. So it boots up because you've installed the software on there, it boots to that card. Right. So we've got that, we've got our Ethernet, we've got our USB. Now there is a trick about USB. Since this is powered by a USB cable, sometimes I've had a lot of issues when it comes to powering things like a wireless keyboard or mouse because there's not enough power coming from, to this. From the Raspberry Pi. Right, so the idea, what I simply did was I got a powered USB hub. Yeah, I would suggest show, that. Grab a powered USB hub. Right. This kind of makes the whole thing much larger, obviously, right. but at least you're not running into issues with trying to read a uh, USB disc or a wireless keyboard and mouse, because you want to be able to control this in one way or another. So what I need to do is turn on the Raspberry Pi before that TV shuts off. So what is the what is the what is the processor in the Raspberry Pi? I believe it's a 700 megahertz. I want to say ARM processor actually. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's it's a fairly it's not a, a desktop computer, but it's a fairly capable little computer given its size. Now there's no power button on the actual Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi. So I actually just cycled the power by removing the USB cable. Yeah. Right now on the television next to Leo. That's going to have the output. You're going to be so able this TV to is hooked up via HDMI to your Raspberry Pi. That's right. So it's, wow, you're seeing how long this is going to take. This has gotten so much easier than the old days of prototyping and hobbyists. This is amazing. As a as look at that, the TV also rotates. As it's That's starting up, cool. you can see it's taking a while. Right now, yeah. we're, not, we're not seeing anything. That's because of the slow SD card. You're seeing the TV's off over there. The TV's there it off. Goes. Okay, so ah, we can go to that shot. Right. So it is starting. Our television's having an issue. It went to sleep. That's but all. But Brian has our video up. We'll just turn the TV back on. So while Leo's tinkering with that, you can see that XBMC is running on the device. So here we go. That is really cool. So that's the operating system, but th that's the one that comes with this uh, uh, Raspberry Pi BMC. This Rasp is the one that's BMC. This is what you'll see when you start there it up is. Got XBMC. Right here. I turned it back on. on Raspberry Pi. Wow, look at that. That's right. a nice UI. Let's see. Is it actually registering? It's kind of a home theater UI. Is it registering my my USB? Probably not. Because, of course, we're doing this live. What could possibly go wrong when we do it live? It does think that it's uh, almost midnight, so it's still on UTC. Yeah, right now We'll it have says, to set the new time zone, obviously. Right now, it's not registering my USB. I'm not sure exactly Mounted why. removable hardware Kingston. Okay, so we're slowly, you know, it's just, it's booting up, so it's taking a while to mount the stuff. Is well, that right? Well, that was attached. That Kingston is actually my USB hard drive. Oh, that has video so files. That. What I'm going to do, and I've had this problem before, is I just cycle the power again when it comes to this. Okay. Sometimes it's a little bit buggier than not. Sometimes it's not. This It's a $35 computer. This is not unusual, in other words. Right, I would experience. guess it almost always has to do with power issues, be, be my guess. So recycling sometimes can help. That's actually exactly what I found. I was yeah. looking it up. I'm like, what's the issue? Yeah. It could just be the power. A lot of uh, issues with power supplies because you well, can you're, use... You're powering it via a micro USB cable. Right. And so if I'm, I'm actually using a, an iPad adapter, which has a lot more wattage than when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, a regular So one. this cable's plugged into an iPad adapter. Yeah, I think All it's right. actually amperage, technically. Okay. My mistake. Does it say what it wants? I mean, does it say it's looking for 5 volts, 2 amps, or...? The claim is that you can use a, a 5 volt USB normal adapter that you have for anything. For anything. And I have not found that to does be the case. Does not mention the amperage? No, yeah. that's the thing. So I've, I've had trouble with that. Well, you've got, you've got 2 amps coming out of that iPad mm -hmm. charger, so that should be 
That's as much as USB ever does. And oh, there we go. So now it's now that we. All right, a reboot fixed it. A reboot. Now you can see that the mouse cursor is moving. Mm -hmm. I've got my wireless keyboard, and see now it's telling me it's scolding me. You should always shut down via the power icon. But if you can't control it, you can't. <laughs> Sometimes you can't. There's no yeah. there's no buttons on this. So what we're gonna do is I want to show what it can actually do well. We've added on some video add-ons, which are web video. Now, I've, how do you do that? You do that via downloading? Well, what you do is you go into the add-on section. You can go into the Get More section. Oh, I see. There's okay. a catalog right there. I pre-installed. So this needs net access to do that. Probably. Right. right. If you, if, I mean, but you've if, got Twit. There's a Twit app for this. There's a Twit app. There's ESPN, CBS, a whole bunch of things. Let's get some PBS here. Let's see what happens. This is from a guy named Stacked wrote this. I mean, because this is from XBMC, this has been around for a very long time. Are you kidding me? I can watch Downton Abbey on this thing? I don't know. Let's see if it actually works. I haven't tried that out personally. <laughs> uh, I, I've tried out some ESPN, and it looked beautiful. Web video looked fantastic on this device, as far as I could tell. Here o we go. M-G. So, like I said, this thing can handle 1080p video. It looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's a little artifacting. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty good. So this is the way it's working right now. And it, it worked very well when it came to web video. Now, for local video, like if you had a USB at attached to it, mm -hmm. let's go to files here. We're going to go and this see. This is very impressive. And remember, this was a project that was done essentially as an educational computer for schools in Britain. And, in fact, we had the guy who uh, was part of the original creating team on. Uh, and it was just a side project. This thing has taken off. Raspberry Pi is quite amazing. So right now, I'm gonna, this is going to run off of a local USB drive. This is Walking with Dinosaurs uh, version that I have sitting around. This is, is uh, an MPEG-4 right. uh, recompress of a CD or a DVD, or rather a DVD. Right, it was a DVD rip that I've done for myself. This is an MP4. It's running, it's, it's H.264 video. This looks video. fabulous. Runs fine. Yeah. So far, so good. I, I mean, it The sun's also, burning me. It's so good. It does some, it does AirPlay video as well. If you go into the settings, AirPlay audio if you want it. So if you want this little $35 box to be your receiver for your AirPlay video and audio, cheaper than an Apple TV, Cheaper than JBL speakers that have AirPlay built in. Mark's even saying this actually works better than his smart TV. In fact, it's probably more processor than your smart TV comes with. And that is pretty things. impressive. Wow, we've come a long way. Let's Amazing. Let's go to the weather right now. But there were some things I found to be troublesome when it came to real life situations in my network. This might not be the case for you. For you. Network video on the Raspberry Pi did not work very well. I had big files, about 700 megabytes, maybe a gigabyte or so. And the Raspberry Pi trying to get this and decoding it yeah. it was a real, real horrible time right. when I had that. I've had some success with like smaller files, but I did find a workaround. So this, this is very important. If you like your giant video files that are over a gigabyte and you want to use a Raspberry Pi at each TV, I suggest getting a transcoder. Check out Tversity. Right now, it's, I believe it's now it's $4. It's for Windows only. And what it does is... You run this on a PC that you have running all the time, on your, your main machine. This is what I like to do, a powerful machine. What it will do is it'll take a look at your media, media files, transcode them, and send the stream to the, media, to the Raspberry Pi. That seems better than trying to transcode it on the fly, right. on the Pi. And the, and the Raspberry Pi doesn't have to do any of the decoding, right. so it can do this very, very easily. Now, I, found, I didn't realize that Tversity now charges. So if you don't like $4 as a cost, there's also a PS3 media server which even though it's called the PS3 media server, it allows any device that handles UPnP or DLNA, like the Raspberry Pi, to see what's going on. So you can transcode all your stuff from a Linux machine, a Windows box, or a Mac for free. And it also works with Xbox, PS3, anything you could think of. So it's, it's really powerful. I found that to be the real hook. If you wanted to put one of these machines at every single television, have one major monster machine that can handle all the transcoding, for your network video, and then let this do the rest. That's an interesting idea. So that's what I found worked there. Uh, so this pretty, that's what we did with the Raspberry Pi. You can see it takes about, the, the entire time when I did this from beginning to end at home, about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, to get around these little workarounds where I had power issues, and they're realizing, get a powered USB hub. Yeah, that Very makes sense. Very important, yeah. because that's yeah. a small issue. Or HDMI worked right out of, out, of, out of the gate. Everything worked very well. But without the powered USB, that's an issue. If you don't want to hook up a keyboard and mouse, there's also free XBMC applications out there for mobile. I have it on my iPad, so I can probably, let's see how it goes now, because I don't know if it's on the right network, but the iPad does have an XBMC remote control. Probably not going to work right now. So you could use your iPad as a remote control. If you I wanted to, 
you would be able to. Well, this is what it would look like on your this pie thing. is not on the network though, is right, it? Right, it's on a different right, network right, right now. Right. Not a, usually an issue at your place, but you can have a remote from your iPad or iOS device. Some people have even powered their uh, XBMC or their Raspberry Pi from their TV's USB port. Right. So you could just stick it back there. Yeah. Have it networked. Nobody ever notices it. That's a great idea. So it's nice and tiny. This is, uh, but if you think about it, a Roku box probably doesn't have a much larger board in it. The, certainly the Roku stick has an even smaller board in it. So as small as this looks, as simple as it looks, processors have gotten so good, the ASICs have gotten so good, that really this is a full computer uh, in almost every respect. And the low wattage means you can run it all day long. You can keep it on in your house. It's not going to eat up a ton of power. Right. Unlike my old servers, which were, which were big desktop right. PCs. I mean, they were pulling out 120 watts. This is like five. It's like nothing. So that's that's the Raspberry Pi episode, the one you guys have been wanting for so long. At least one thing you can do with the Raspberry oh, Pi. Oh yeah, we're gonna reuse. There's a lot more you can do this. it. Now that we got it, let's, let's do some more. Here's the other thing, like because the hard drive is is the SD card. If you want a different functions, easy to change personality. Just get a different SD card, put that thing on there, reboot, and now the Raspberry Pi is something else. Absolutely. A temperature that's, that's, gauge, a weather station, a home theater system, whatever you that's want. That's all to be. it takes. And now that's cool. I want to show off something that uh, a friend of ours sent in because these don't come with cases. You can print them out yourselves or you can build one. There are third party cases out there. But our friend Lee Jarrett, spider in the chat room, sent us. These. He made a case? We're going to have to assemble them ourselves, but these are part of them. I want to show them off because I did not oh, expect this. Oh, look at that. Laser etched. A know how case. Laser etched know how cases that we'll build <laughs> at some point around this. That is really cool. What's his name? His name is Lee. Hey, Lee. Lee Jarrett Spider. Look at that. Isn't that, that was, cool? There's a plastic lid and a little bit of leather. Yeah, the rest of the leather parts. Leather burning. The rest of the parts I can put together eventually, but right now it's. Uh, well, I'll have to do it after nice. the show. But it's Thank awesome. You, Lee. Thank you so much for that. We're That's gonna put really it together, great. follow your instructions, and we'll show that off probably on our Google Plus page. And now is a good time as any to plug the Google Plus community. Why not? If you guys aren't aware, we have a Google Plus community where you guys are really active. There's over 800 of you in there. And I'm gonna put a spotlight on Wreath Walls or Wraith Walls, excuse me on your, on the pronunciation of your name. He gave us a tip on Media Monkey. He said, you guys missed a major feature of Media Monkey. This is back when we were organizing mm -hmm. our music library. He says, once you have everything tagged, you can right click your entire library, tell it to auto name and organize the files, and Media Monkey will actually rename all of your files based on the proper tags, then organize them into artist and album folders. Not only does it get everything tagged, but it gets everything organized too. Just the right way. That's cool. So lots of lots of Thank things you, going on there, and you guys are helping out each other. It's like an old school forum. Like Jennifer Bright wanted to filter out content for her kids, and if you go to the site now, you can see that other people. A guy named Dan came in, came up with a solution with Open DNS. Lots of good discussions going on there. I'm learning stuff all the time. Plus, wanting your ideas, and if you want to go and check that out, G plus dot two slash twitkh, or you can just do a search on Google Plus, and you can join the community and get really active. And Spider, if you sent us a video on how you made these Raspberry Pi cases, maybe we'd show it on Know How. That'd, That'd be, be awesome. A, a great Know How segment. And definitely Making your own Raspberry Pi case. We could put that up on, on Google Plus. Actually, we could put it up and share on Google Plus or fun. other sites yeah. as well. So we've hit a lot of points. There's lots of different things going on with the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi cases, Google Plus communities, all kinds of links. It's a very vibrant community. It's really cool. What could you possibly do if you didn't get any of the links right now? Well, don't worry. We got it all covered. Twit.tv slash KH. We've got show notes, instructions. I write a lot of show notes for, the, for each episode. Uh, each episode, we've got links to everything we talked about. So if you wanted to know how to do the command line interface uh, installation of XBMC, oh, we'll have a link to that. If you want to know how to get the GUIs for that, we'll find that too. And that'll be available at twit.tv slash KH. And if you'd like to know how to support Know How, besides watching the show, participating, tweeting, going to our Google Plus page, you could also go to twit.tv slash Amazon. This is something, I got this idea from Adam Carolla. He always encourages his viewers and his listeners on his podcast to go to the webpage and click the Amazon link. Did you know that after you click that link and go to Amazon, you could shop, you could buy, and whatever you buy, we get a small percentage of as an affiliate fee. It helps us support the show. So twit.tv slash Amazon, we've got links not only for the US, but also for Canada and the UK. You see those picks too. We got some great picks, but even if you don't buy what that pick says, if you just go to the Amazon link, 
we're going to get affiliate fees for anything you buy for that shopping excursion. So that's a nice way to cost you nothing and helps us out. Actually, it's quite a bit of money. It's a several percentage of uh, your purchase, so it's a it's a good deal. Yeah, so go support Twit, yeah. support Know How, go to that link. Sounds Thank great. you so much, I as Actar. I've been wanting to play with the Raspberry Pi for some time. That's a lot oh, of I'm fun. Oh, I'm going to be re reusing this later on for another project soon, too. I'm excited. We do Know How every single Thursday. It's around about 4 p.m., 3 or 4 p.m. Pacific. Something like that. Whenever I get over uh, from after iPad today, um, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Please join us. We'd love it if you watch live. But if you can't, on-demand versions are available everywhere, including YouTube. YouTube, youtube.com slash knowhow. That's our YouTube channel and all the previous knowhows are there. Tell your friends if they're looking for a way to do something in particular or some advice or even just a, a how-to. It's a great resource for you and we plan to make lots more of these shows and fill up that YouTube channel. Twit.tv slash KH or youtube.com slash knowhow. Thank you, Ayaz. No problem, Leo. I'm glad this thing actually works. Behind, look, it actually works. Now that you know how, go out and make a Raspberry Pi Media Center.